Hey guys, it's Mikey's Mind here, back again with another book review. I've uh, reread Private Peaceful by Michael Mulpergo, a superb author and a great book. Um, Strange Meeting by Susan Hill sort of put me on a bit of a World War I kick, and I've reread Private Peaceful and loved every word. Um, I've read it a couple of times now, and I just find it so powerful. Very different to Strange Meeting, a lot more sort of character driven, um, but here's my review. Enjoy. So, Private Peaceful. Um, it follows the the um, the lives of uh, of, of uh, a family, um, the Peaceful family. Uh, young uh, Tomo Peaceful and his older brother Charlie and uh, Big Joe. They um, it starts out with with some beautiful sort of snapshots of, of sort of English countryside pre-war um, peace, basically. And some of those um, earlier sort of scenes, those earlier chapters, are so sort of filmic, so kind of. Um, visual and, and just beautiful um it's it kind of sets a kind of uh, jarring tone there's a lot to lose for young thomas peaceful and i think that's i think that's an amazing place to start really it just the the, the happy sort of peaceful lives the young childhood um the sort of uh, inexperience not necessarily naivety but the horrors of war have not yet taken grip and i think by starting there it just like i said it, it sets up a lot for this for this young man to lose basically um, the the love story that develops between himself and Molly and and where that ends, I just think that's it's such a beautiful little relationship and uh, reminded me a little bit of Dickens in some ways those early sort of blossoming relationships, but um, powerful, emotional and uh, and sad as well. These sort of childish adventures, you know, winding up sort of uh, Grandma Wolf and uh, it just it, it just feels very innocent, uh, quite charming and um, completely jarring once you get to No Man's Land. Tomo's heartbreak is hard to hard to swallow really um, when he finds out that his older brother Charlie is to have a baby um, with Molly he's he's devastating and it, and it feels like he's in their shadow there's this clandestine relationship that's developing between his older brother and his and, and, and Tomo's first love Molly and the reader knows it and uh, Tomo's sort of the last to realize it and it's it is hard to, it's a bitter pill to swallow and uh, yeah it feels it feels harsh it feels typical um it feels so typical it's sad but um yeah this is uh, early heartbreak like that is difficult it's difficult to follow with tom and i think i will leave it at this really the most powerful thing that i got from this story i think when we read we read so personally and uh i um i rung my brother as soon as i'd finished reading the story I, i'd run i rung my brother and it felt like the right thing to do and anyone who's read the story um i don't really want to spoil the ending for you i don't want to spoil the ending for you it's well worth a read but um I think two things that stand out, the um, the loyalty between siblings. I mean, personally, I've got a brother and a sister, but the, the, the loyalty, the um, the bond between those siblings, between Tomo and his brother Charlie and, and, and Joe as well, so powerful. And it's tested to its absolute limit. And, and when it's tested to its absolute limit, it's proven to be um, strong and it's proven to be loyal. And I, and I just, it's, it is so heartbreaking, but... Um, a really powerful story and that's the thing while this book is sort of ticking towards those final moments um you don't really want to turn the page and um, i've read a few books like that recently you just don't want to read the next line because you know what it could be um so really really powerful and as i said i rung my, I rung my brother and uh yeah we're, we're pretty close but it's it's a book like this that can sometimes make you appreciate what you've got um the uh, the bravery and the courage and the and the and the absolute to the to the death sort of loyalty that these brothers have is just beautiful and so yeah my final word on this book is that it, where i didn't read books i think i kind of had a bit of a skip where i read sort of childhood books roll Dahl, etc um then i read harry potter and i delved into lord of the rings and then that took me up to like 18 maybe and i i started reading things like 1984 and i, and I don't ever remember reading sort of what we call ya or or teen fiction or anything like that. Um, I'd say if I read this when I was about 12, 13, I think I'd have found it really quite emotional. Um, I did as an adult, but I think I think um, it it impresses me that that um, this is the quality of fiction that, that children can can enjoy these days. I think there are powerful stories that need to be told, and and Morpurgo's doing that. He's done that. It's 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 so good that the children have. Um, they can confront everything books like this contain um, in such a in such a good way, um, in such a positive way. I've not worded that properly, but I think we're lucky to have fiction like this, and I think especially at those formative years, it's it's important to uh, to devour fiction like this.
So yeah, I don't know if that was the most, I don't know if that was the most uh, organised <laughs> discussion or review I've ever done, but a great book and well worth a read. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this review, if you're not a subscriber, click the button below. And um, I really appreciate you watching, guys. Take care.